Hey guys, today I'm going to be making a video on how to improve your last layer. This is probably my strongest point on the 3x3. My F2L is pretty mediocre, but my last layer is pretty alright. I think it's one of the better last layers out there. Certainly not the fastest, but I think it's pretty good. Um, and I think last layer is something that's fairly easy to improve, but a lot of people don't really know how to go about doing it. So I'm just going to make a video showing you how I think you can improve your last layer. The first thing when improving your last layer, this applies to people who are learning algs. Um, so if you are newer, this applies to you. Do not learn crappy algs from the start. Don't learn an alg that's easy just to learn it because down the road you are just going to replace it with a better one. So it's better if you just learn a good alg first and then your muscle memory you know, will adapt to it and you will be improving that alg over time instead of learning a bad one and then eventually having to readjust to a new one. So just learn a good alg from the start. Um, an example of one that I think people do a lot is this one right here. A lot of people do F, left sexy F prime, rotate F, left sexy F prime. Um, and in my opinion, that's really bad and I don't think anyone should use that. A much better alg and almost just as easy is M do a soon U M prime. That's a lot faster and it's way easier. So look around the internet and find different algs and one that you think fits you. Also watch how other people execute algs because you can learn a lot from just watching what executions other people use for algs. I know that's how I've learned a lot and it really helps. So tip number one, don't learn bad algs from the start. Tip number two, reduce the amount of AUFing that you do before executing an ALG. There are so many people, and this drives me absolutely insane, when people, they get to OLS, so let's say they insert their F2L pair, and then they start going, uh, 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 oh, here it is, and then they do their OLL. There's absolutely no reason that you need to be sitting here AUFing like this. Like, there's seriously no point. After you finish your F2L pair, just look at the cube, like... Don't sit here going like this. That's not going to help you. The majority of your OLLs, if not all, can be recognized just from looking at the top and two sides. Like, I mean, this algorithm is really easy. You see a T right here, and then you see this block here. Like, it, you just automatically know that's what this is going to be because this block, there has to be a block back here for this. Um, it just, there's no reason to be doing lots of AUF. And then for PLL, People do this a lot for PLL too. Now I kind of understand why for PLL, but this can also easily be fixed. Um, just learn two-sided PLL recognition. I'll have a link to some tutorials for that. Uh, it's really easy, and in my opinion, it saves a lot of time because I see people doing stuff like they'll get to here and they'll sit, they'll go U2, oh, and then U2 back, and then solve like that, which is really irritating. Another irritating thing that people do for PLL is if they're if things aren't lined up, they're going to AUF, then rotate, and then do their ALG. Don't do that. AUF after. Like, there's no reason to rotate and AUF. If you recognize your PLL, they have a J perm right here. Instead of lining it up, rotating, and doing it, you're better off seeing it, doing the ALG, and then AUFing after. I see way too many people rotating and doing AUFs, and that's really bad, so don't do that. Um, so learn your two-sided PLL recognition, and just learn to reduce the amount of AUFing that you do for your last layer. Tip number three is learn corner permutation recognition. This is really important because it helps, helps you narrow down what your PLL is going to be. So part of this is it, once you learn things like COLL or CLL for 2x2, two um, you'll learn how to recognize this. Uh, so I would suggest learning those and this will naturally come with it and just experimenting with how your algs work. But so for this, I know that if I have these two corners are the same right here and then these two are opposite right here, that means I'm going to get a U-perm or an edge PLL or even a skip. Um, now for the next case, I see that the corners are the same here and opposite up here. So this means I know I'm going to get a diag swap, which is not good. But knowing that that's coming really helps. If you can narrow it down instead of you know going into your OL and not having a clue what you need to look for, it, it just helps narrow things down. So I suggest learning this 
and that'll come in handy. Now one more thing that goes along with CP recognition is something called ROLL. Um, I'm pretty sure Jay is the one who came up with this concept. I don't think his video is out on this yet, but he will have a video out on it. I'm going to explain the basic concept though. So you will recognize your corners. So, and then basically you're trying to figure out when you do your AUG, if your bar will end up on the left. Because there are a lot of PLL AUGs where the headlights need to be on the left in order for you to do your AUG. The majority of the G perms are like this, a J perm is like this, a T perm is like this, an F perm is like this. So knowing when you're going to have a bar on left is really helpful. Um, but now taking that a step further, you can narrow down if you're going to have an adjacent swap for your edges or an opposite swap. So for this specific OLL case right here, it's going to be different for all of them. So you kind of have to just go through them um, and figure them out. I know that if these two edges are opposite, that means I'm going to have an adjacent swap PLL. And I know that if these corners are the same and this one is opposite and this is a random edge, that I will have um, my headlights on the left. So I know now that I have headlights on left and an adjacent swap PLL, which narrows down the amount of PLLs it can be by a significant amount. I think it ends up coming down to like four or five different PLLs it can be. So instead of thinking it could be 21 different PLLs, you're now narrowed down to four or five, which is really helpful. So now for that same OLL, I know that if these edges are adjacent edges, that my edges are going to be opposite. So that means it could be things like a T perm or an F perm. Um, and I think there might be a few others. Um, but narrowing it down like that really helps. So now I know I'm going to have a bar or my headlights on left and opposite edges. So when I do that, I can immediately see this bar here and go, okay, that means it's going to be a T perm and just go straight into it. So that helps eliminate a lot of pauses. Now this is something that's more advanced. Um, so I, if you're newer, I don't really expect you to know this, but this is something that definitely comes in handy. And I use this for a few cases for OLL. Um, I should know more, but it comes in really handy when you can do that. Um, so keep this in mind. Tip number four, learn different AUG subsets. Um, this is something that isn't huge. There are people who are fast without this. Um, Colin Burns is one of them. He, he won U.S. Nationals and he didn't even know things like COLL, which is, in my opinion, really basic. Um, but I think learning these definitely helps and it gives you the chance to have a lot of better last layer cases. So different subsets such as COLL, OLLCP, VLS, WV, MW, ZBLL, just different subsets like this. I'll have links to all of these with various websites, um, tutorials, and you can watch those. Um, I definitely think a lot of those are really helpful. Things for like ZBLL, it's nice to just know the easy cases so that when you see them, you can go, okay, that's going to skip. Um, so just keep those in mind. Learn different AUG subsets, and those can come in really handy. So tip number five, uh, this will kind of come naturally after learning different AUG subsets like I just talked about, but learn AUGs from different angles. Um, this can come in really handy just to avoid having to do AUFs. Uh, really, you're starting to get to the point where you want to minimize as much time spent on your, your last layer as you can. Um, so this is a really basic example, but for this OLL, you can do it from here or you could do it from here. So if you have this OLL from here, there's no sense in going like that. You just did a U2 for no reason when you could have just done that. Um, that's a super basic example. Most algs aren't going to be that easy, um, but learning different algs for different angles comes in really handy. But make sure that alg is fairly decent and that you can do it roughly the same speed as your other one. Because if the other alg is significantly slower, it's probably just gonna be faster to AUF and do the other AUG that you're better at. Um, but if you can find an AUG that's comparable and a different angle, that comes in really handy and I think it's something that's pretty beneficial. And the last tip I have is just optimize your AUGs. Um, this is something I think a lot of people don't do. They use very generic finger tricks for their AUGs and they could be performing them a lot faster. I have a whole series on my channel for executing PLLs. Um, and I think a lot of them are pretty good, um, but everyone's going to be different, so don't only learn from mine. There are plenty of other fast people who do algs very fast with different executions, so find the one that fits your style. But 
spend time optimizing your algs, set goals and barriers you want to break. The most common one for PLL is obviously sub one. Um, so aim to get a lot of your PLL sub one. Find an execution that you think works well and practice it over and over until you get faster at it. Obviously, you don't need to sit there all the time. There's more beneficial things in your solve that you could spend time on than just sitting there doing a T perm over and over to get it sub one. But I think spending some time to optimize your algs is something that's important. Um, so just spend a little bit of time practicing that and I think that'll be pretty beneficial. So there are my tips for improving your last layer. A lot of this stuff is fairly basic. There's a few more advanced things in there. Uh, so this doesn't really apply to faster people. I think a lot of faster people already know these things. Um, but if you're newer, I definitely think these will help. And if you're having a hard time improving your last layer, just do some targeted practice where you sit down with your last layer and figure out which step you're having issues with. Is it, you know, you're spending a lot of time recognizing PLL? Are you wasting time on your algs? You're just using slow algs? Just figure out what it is and sit down and try and improve it. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.